Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm out here doing a little bit of target practice and behind me I have a target you probably have seen in some of my most recent videos. The target's by Challenge Target and that's what I want to show you this afternoon. Plus I want to do a little bit of shooting at it with a few different fun handguns. Let's take a look at this target. That was with my Glock. It's definitely calibrated right now for 9mm. By calibrated I mean that you'll notice a target when I hit it fell over. It took a couple of shots. It's adjustable, and that's one of the things I like about the target, but you're probably wondering, how did it fall over, right? It's just a paper target. Well, there's more to this target than what you can see right now. Let me show you what's going on behind the scenes. So we're walking up on the target here. You can see kind of a close-up of what's going on. And around back, that's where all the magic happens. That steel plate that you see right there, when you hit it, that's what allows the target or what makes the target fall over. The plate is hidden behind the paper target here in the front, but you'll notice the plate's the same size as this A kill zone on this USPSA IPSC target. So if you hit it in the A zone, it'll hit it and cause the target to fall over. It's a reactive target. If you hit outside the A, you'll just punch holes in the paper and you won't be able to knock the target over so it won't count as a kill zone hit. You'll notice also that the target itself this is AR-500 steel target right here. And then it just clamps onto a 2x4. The 2x4s are not shipped with the target. You just buy those at your local hardware store. And then down here, you'll notice, it has the facilities for 1x4s, which are how you hold the paper target in place. You can take this whole assembly off and simply use this as a steel target, as you normally would without a paper target in front of it. Take a look at this hinging mechanism. So when the target gets hit, the AR steel, AR-500 steel target is hit, you'll notice that it just falls over backwards, like that. Up here in the front, when I say calibrate, this is how you calibrate it. The screw right here adjusts how much lean the target has forward. If you take some of the lean out, it makes it easier to fall over. So you can calibrate it for 380, 9x18 Mac, 9mm, 45, whatever caliber you want. You can make it so it falls over with one hit, or it takes two or three hits to knock it over. I have it set up right now to knock over 9mm with a couple of hits. And you'll notice the 9x18 Mac wasn't knocking it over. But I can calibrate it so it'll fall over with the Mac cartridge. The whole target's modular, meaning it strips down really easy, and the various components you can take on and off at will. It doesn't require any special tools. This is the heavy-duty model, which means it's meant for professional range use or military law enforcement. There is just a regular standard model, which is you know about 20 bucks cheaper, that is intended for just regular casual shooters. Now another thing you can do, there's a pinhole right here. You put this pin in and it locks in place and now the target's locked in the upright position. It won't fall over no matter how many times you hit it. You take that pin out like I have it out right now and that allows it to pivot. And this again adjusts how easy it falls over. Now I can turn this all the way out, just let it lean forward, and it won't fall over at all, again, even without the pin in it. If you want to take the paper target off, it's easy enough to do. Just unscrew the locking screws here in the back and just lift these out. I have them kind of wedged in there. There we go. And then you can shoot it without the paper target. You just have a standard steel plate here, and it'll still fall over the way it's configured. Now, if you... Okay, now I have the target, as I mentioned, locked in the upright position, so it won't fall over no matter how many times I shoot it. I'm going to put a bunch of rounds into it with the G17 and show you that it'll take as many hits as I can lay on it, and it won't fall over. Now, you'll see when it gets hit, it still moves backwards. It gives you that audio and visual cue, but it's not falling over. Pretty cool stuff. Now I can put the paper target back in front of it. I can do the same thing, or I just pull that cotter pin out, make the fine adjustments I need to make it so it'll fall over with one or two or multiple hits, and I'm back into having a reactive target. All right, I got the Smith & Wesson shield. Haven't shot this in a while. Did a little bit of shooting with it. Let's see if I can knock that target over. You know what? First, I'm going to shoot it in the head. Let me show you what that looks like. I'm not going to hit the center of mass. 
even though it would be a kill shot, right there in the A. I'll shoot over on the left-hand side, shoot over on the right-hand side, and then I'll shoot it dead center. Knocked it right over. To reset, again, all you do is just walk down, grab your target, pull it back up, and you're ready to go again. I really do enjoy shooting this little shield. I probably should shoot it more. I used to carry it all the time, but I'm back to carrying my G19 in the winter. But anyway, it's a great target. Let me show you what teardown looks like on this target. It's really simple to take apart. There's just a knob in the back that you can hand, or loosen with your hand, I should say. And that allows you to take the head off the target. There is a small metal piece in the back that it acts against to pinch the wood. You don't want to lose that. Then you can also take this holder off. This is the paper target holder. You can take that off. It just sets in there like that. If you don't want it, take it off, set it aside, put the head back on, and you can shoot it without the paper target. It's also nice. Here's the base. It's nice and small. I can fit this easily in my Jeep. I don't have much space in there. I have a couple of these targets now. I could probably put four or five of these in there comfortably. It has a nice carrying handle that you can pick it up by. Once you disassemble it, you can grab your parts. You can pretty much grab everything in one trip. And it doesn't weigh a whole bunch. Again, it's about 28 pounds, which is nice and handy for the type of shooting that I do. And always setting up and tearing down my range every time I go out. People like to ask me why I like to shoot at steel, and really, it's very simple. First of all, I like the reactive nature of steel. Just standard steel targets are a lot of fun to shoot at. You get that audible hit, and you can also see the target move. Now, targets like this challenge target, it's more reactive. It takes it to the next training level. As I mentioned earlier, it trains you to focus on the center of mass or headshots or wherever you want to adjust that steel target in the background, and it also hides it from the shooter, so it teaches you not to look for bullseyes and things like that, to focus on being able to hit a threat center of mass or head or wherever you want it to be hit. Now, the other thing that's really great about shooting steel is the fact that this target retails for $194, and I will put a link in the description below to the actual target on the Challenge, uh, Challenge Target website. But for $194, this target is going to last me a lifetime, literally. It has replaceable parts. The pieces that might get hit by stray rounds or stray gunfire are all replaceable. It's simple wood. You can pick it up at your hardware store. But for $200, if you think about it, a paper target is going to cost you between 50 cents and a buck these days. So for 200 paper targets, man-sized targets like that Ipsic target down there, it's like 75 cents a pop, I have a steel target that's going to last me a lifetime. I'll go through 200 paper targets in a couple of months. So anyway, it's a nice way to save money. And also, I think it gives you better training possibilities if you use it to its potential like this particular target. If you guys have any questions about this Challenge Steel Target or anything I said here this afternoon, you can always ask those questions on our Facebook page. You can find us on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash military arms. As always, everybody, thanks for watching. Thanks for those subs. We'll talk to you guys soon.